thank you all for you know sticking with us um, throughout this process. Our next speaker coming to the stage is Ivan Novikov. And Ivan is an API platform lead at MSD. And Ivan will be talking about building an enterprise API platform this afternoon. So welcome to the stage, Ivan. It's nice to have you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Hi, everyone. So in the next 20 minutes, I will share with you how we started our API journey and how we built a mature and progressive API platform in our company. Uh, first, let's start with the questions, why do we need an API platform? So around 10 years ago, APIs were already a standard component used by startups and technology companies in their digital solutions. But this was not the case for many companies from other industries. The adoption of APIs was much slower and there was a need to put an extra energy into it. And this is how the idea for an API platform came, a platform to concentrate tools and knowledge about APIs, a platform to ignite and accelerate API adoption. And this is the brief story about how we build our API platform in a large pharmaceutical company. Uh, also, a good question is, what is a platform? And there are various definitions, and they're very different. And in my opinion, one of the best descriptions of a platform has been written by Ivan Botcher uh, in his article, Talk About Platforms. Um, of course, there are some obvious uh, things like it has to be secure and has to be up to date, but I would like to pinpoint these three features uh, it has to be self-service uh, it has to provide the services through self-service it has to be component composed by separate services which can be used to, uh, independently not a monolith and it may be the most important one to to be easy to use quick and cheap to start using right to uh, to enable easy on ramp easy uh, easy getting going um, so unfortunately, we came upon this article much later in the journey, but somehow we immediately knew that this is what we wanted our platform to be. And our journey starts uh, in the Stone Age. So it was time when we were just discovering the world of APIs uh, and actually also uh, getting the first tools and learning uh, how to use them. Um, it was uh, really, we were starting from zero. There were no APIs, uh, no traffic, and we were only three members. And speaking about the tools, uh, we had the standard API tools. We had an API gateway and a developer portal uh, provided by uh, um, a leading vendor in this area at that time. But there was one, one, uh, one big problem. Uh, no one knew about it. Right. It, actually, it was uh, even hard to uh, no, even <laughs> almost no one knew about APIs at all. So we had to start really from the beginning uh, to uh, explain to, to have to run a various presentation workshops across the company, explaining what are APIs, what they are good for, what's the value in it, in them, how to use them, how to build them and so on. And uh, actually, in many cases, we had to explain that APIs we were talking about were not active pharmaceutical ingredients, which is a very common abbreviation in, in, in the pharma world. Apart from that, uh, we, had, we had our platform, we had our, our tools, but there were no APIs on them. So the immediate next steps were, okay, get, get some APIs up and running. Uh, and uh, uh, we, we decided to go after, after the, the low-hanging fruit. We started thinking, okay, what capability is most needed? What's, 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 what, what would be the easiest to implement? Uh, can we find the killer API to implement, which will uh, kind of propagate and evangelize APIs? And in our case, it was quite easy. Almost any application needs to authenticate users. Almost any application needs to get the user profile with the name, email, other contacts, and so on. And surprisingly, at that time, it was quite hard to uh, to find a meeting room. So the, our um, our office tools uh, were hard to use, and uh, it was really always taking a lot of time to to, to to navigate, to find, to navigate to the to the meeting room. So these were our first three APIs: authentication, user profiles, and uh, meeting room API. This helped us uh, like immediately get uh, uh, the first adopters, the first applications using them. 
So we had our first APIs up and running. We verified that they work. Um, we, we, yeah, the, and it, now it was time to focus on uh, organizing stuff a bit, um, to putting, adopting the processes uh, to, uh, to, to, to make them, make those APIs more compliant and secure. So uh, at, at first we were acting a bit uh, chaotically as, uh, as a true pioneers, but now was the time to, to start maturing uh, the platform. At that time, we, we had around 13 million API requests per year, which is which was a very low number actually, but it was our, our first APIs running, the first 10 APIs, and then the, the, we had already 16 members. So the first question which, which came was, what about the rules? So uh, 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 pharmaceutical uh, industry is a highly reg regulated one and the documentation and compliance is uh, are, are uh, very critical there. So we soon found out that we need to fill in a risk assessment, privacy assessment. We need to create requirement specs, design spec, development summary report, and 10 more documents. Uh, and we actually had to follow the change management process, which introduces various stages, which required approvals and, and so on. Uh, a big challenge was that uh, the processes at that time were, uh, actually they didn't count with APIs. It was hard to fit in the API anywhere. It, it wasn't a, a software running on, on, a, on, a, on a phone or a computer. It wasn't a network infrastructure. It wasn't hardware. So uh, we had some challenges into actually making uh, making it work um, with, with the documentation. For example, a typical question in the risk assessment was uh, how, how many users will be using it? So and with APIs, you don't know, right? At the beginning, you have one, one, one client application which, with 100 users, but in three months, it could be 10 applications and thousands of users, right? So we had to start bending uh, and to, to, to adapting uh, the SDOC process around the APIs. And it took uh, a lot of time we were uh, talking with various experts throughout the company. It was very challenging, but in, in, in the end, we, we managed to tailor uh, a pretty decent process for that. At the same time, we also discovered that APIs also break from time to time. And this is when uh, angry people start calling you. Uh, and uh, uh, with APIs, uh, there is one unpleasant aspect that if, it, if they work, no one knows, uh, no one cares. If they stop working, suddenly everyone knows and it, it is a big problem. Fortunately, at that time, uh, we, we, we could participate in a, in a pilot uh, for a DevOps team. Uh, at the time, we, the, the traditional approaches, whenever engineers develop something, they pass it further to, to the support and operations. But in this case, we got operations and support people inside the team and we were having regular meetings and we were using the same communication channels and in the end, it wasn't only about the support and operations, also, also about the compliance and other competencies. It was much easier to collaborate with the same people from compliance than every time having another risk analyst to whom you need to explain what is an API and how it works. So it's, it's nothing new I'm saying about, uh, like that the communication and interaction, direct interaction uh, was much more effective than um, writing long procedures, documenting them and forcing everyone to, to follow them. And this is how we entered the Renaissance. Uh, we reached already some level of maturity. We solved our basic existential problems uh, and we were starting to be popular across the company. Uh, we reached almost 100 million API requests per year. We had tens of APIs and 12 team members. And now when the APIs were popular, now everyone wanted to, to have an API. And uh, we had uh, our offerings were quite uh, quite simple. We could either design and develop and operate uh, the API end to end, or if there was an existing API, we could enhance it <clears throat> with an API proxy, providing extra functionality, extra policies out of the box. <clears throat> I'm sorry. And since whenever there is a big demand, uh, naturally you need to start to prioritize. And uh, the best way to prioritize usually is to prioritize by, by value. But how do you find, how do you measure the value of an API? So our way was to, to focus on the reusability. Why? Because when you have reusable APIs, which implement uh, core, um, core capabilities, core company capabilities, they are available as reusable building blocks and digital solutions can be built very, in a very uh, fast and rapid way. Um, they, the capabilities don't have to be built uh, from scratch. 
they're there ready to use. So accelerated go to market. And the other benefit is when following uh, build one, the, the principle of build once and use many times, uh, you avoid cost. You avoid cost for development, for operations. And this is how we actually started thinking about our metrics. When usually when uh, when you speak about metrics uh, of APIs, uh, you talk about uh, traffic, about error rate, uh, but what are the, the metrics which show how valuable the API is for the business? So we concentrated on metrics which uh, show uh, how APIs accelerate digital solutions uh, and how APIs actually help avoiding development and operational costs. Of course, another way to scaling up, another another means of scaling up and, and improving, uh, uh, like the, uh, meeting the demand, is to uh, basically uh, start optimizing. So uh, optimize with the process how many steps are needed, how many approvals are needed, how many documents are needed. Do we need all of them? Can we skip some of them? Um, and of course, on the technical side, things like automated tests, automated deployment, continuous integration, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's no brainer. That's, that's, uh, should apply to, to any software development nowadays. So, <clears throat> and of course, with the increased need, increased uh, API traffic, we also get these increased issues and downtimes. And there is one important thing. Uh, when you run APIs, you want to be the first one to get notified that something is not working. We had a vice president using one popular app, uh, which were using many, many APIs. And he was always calling my boss's boss whenever something was wrong. And he was the first one to find out. I don't know how did it, but it was, it was incredible. He called my boss's boss. He called my boss and my boss called me. And these are not the calls you want to receive when you're an IT platform. So it's very critical to actually get to the, to the, uh, get this information first. And it's actually not only the robust logging and monitoring. Uh, that's that's uh, that's something you should have anyway, but in some cases, you need to to make sure that specific use cases and workflows are are tested constantly. Because uh, if if a, if a box is up, if the network is working, uh, may not always show that something's wrong with the platform. Um, and we're going to the industrial age. I had to accelerate a bit uh, in the matter of time. Uh, so in the industrial age, we had this massive increase of throughput, a lot of uh, a lot of new traffic. We reached almost one billion requests per year, hundred APIs, and already 30, 30 members. Uh, and we started reaching some of the limits. Uh, we say, okay, system the system is as fast as its lowest component, and there was some part of the the, the API platform started to be slower. And it wasn't the ability to process API requests. We are still far, far from the limit uh, on like, like five or ten percent. But other parts, like the analytics module, which actually shows you valuable, uh, incredibly valuable data about how all your APIs are used, uh, what clients are, uh, and how, how much and how the APIs are used, this uh, was purely overloaded by by the traffic and. Uh, wasn't working anymore. Also, the developer portal was, uh, it was much harder for us to customize it and to follow the, the latest needs. So uh, our solution was to, to replace them. I'll be talking a, little, a bit further about this. Uh, also, it's important like, that the team, uh, we, we, we reached some, some, uh, uh, some number of our team members and uh, now it was time to okay, see, okay, are we using the team uh, in an optimal way? And of course, technically, we've had almost uh, everything done, everything automated. But the SDLC and the change management was still manual. It was, still, it was take, still taking a lot of time to to process documentation and to follow all the processes. So one way to tackle this was to actually, and since in, in the latest year we have anything as a code, we decided to go the documentation as a code approach. When we store the markdown templates of the documentation in our source code repository next to the API, and there is an automated process on every release, which runs all uh, quality tools, automated tests, security scans, it generate the documentation and uh, send it for approval. And this saves us a lot of effort and a lot of back and forth round trips between our team and the compliance team that there is something missing, something wrong, and so on. That was a, a, a huge improvement. And we are still uh, working further uh, towards uh, even uh, uh, smoother release process. And we finally get to to the modern age, uh, where it's like uh, 
it's starting to to slow down a bit uh, and to focus more on the make it easy part. You remember the platform definition in the beginning. To, to start listening more to our users, uh, not only for feedback, but also for ideas for new services. And at that time, uh, we, we, we reached this, uh, like more than 1 billion API requests per year and uh, massive increase of APIs. And we still have the 30 members. So we are saturated from, uh, from number of team members. And this was also the reason why we had to start uh, thinking of optimizing and scaling up even more. And in our focus on users, we decided to concentrate on the following parts. Uh, uh, obviously, communication, that's, uh, that's one of the most important things. You need to keep the user in the loop so you understand their needs. You need to inform them properly about everything. And of course, getting feedback. Uh, if, if you don't get the proper feedback, you can't improve uh, in your services. Of course, easy uh, ease of use. Uh, you can have a state of the art surface, but if it's not easy to use, no one will use it. And of course, if a user has troubles, they should get timely help. And usually these items are covered by a support team, but this is not what the modern user wants. They don't want to send tickets and wait the days for something to happen. They just want to do it themselves. So the obvious approach here is to empower the users, to, to let them, uh, and to get out of their way and to let them uh, control, control uh, the situation. And this is how we, uh, we got to actually building our new API portal. As I said, we had a lot of troubles with it uh, before. And as the first step was that we actually realized that we want this portal to be not only for developers, but basically our services are uh, designated not only for developers, but, but for architects, uh, product owners, uh, scrum masters, basically any, any members of, uh, of development and production teams. And as the first step, we renamed our portal from developer portal to API portal. Uh, and our our uh, front page was uh, like uh, follow this this approach that uh, in the landing page we have uh, various um, <coughs> you, you can reach various part, various parts of the portal depending on what you want to do what is your persona what um, what is your role and of course the most important things are uh, the uh, the API catalog where you can discover APIs you can get access to them in an App Store-like experience, uh, and that's uh, that's uh, at the self-service part. Like you, you get there, you get access to the API. So you don't need to send service service tickets anywhere. Uh, and every API has the proper documentation, uh, allowing easy uh, easy to, to allowing developers to start easily in, in some sandbox environment. And there is even um, some some uh, some simple self troubleshooting, providing some practical information about. Uh, some metrics on, on the API and also allowing easily uh, reporting any issues uh, about the API. Uh, and also it was an uh, interesting finding that uh, people are interested not only in the APIs but in our infrastructure and it was natural that we um, we have the mature API platform uh, with interesting infrastructure and services and uh, we decided okay maybe we can expose uh, our internal infrastructure as a service and uh, here I would like to um, uh, remind you uh, a line from the Bezos mandate that uh, you need to design and build capabilities which can be externalized easily, right? Because we, we had to do a lot of effort in order to, a lot, to expose our internal platform services to, to other teams because they weren't designed that way. Um, and maybe we can briefly touch uh, the future age uh, where we we want to focus on, we want to be more sm uh, more smarter. Uh, we want to, to see what are like the, the new capabilities, what what can we do with APIs further. Uh, and one interesting thing, we expect the, the number of requests to actually drop. Uh, maybe not in that way uh, or that much, and maybe it will stagnate. But the important thing is that um, uh, it's, uh, they say that uh, the best API request is the one which you don't need to do to, to make, right? So using various optimizations like like uh, caching, setting the proper caching headers, so the client applications cache the data and don't ask every every minute or every second, uh, using some native technologies in order to uh, to use the right tool for the right fit, and uh, many many other many other improvements. So uh, 
this is this is something we would like uh, really to, to to step into being being smarter. Um, and of course, uh, we want we will be we will keep the the same the same uh, number of team members, but keep, continue scaling up, improving uh, the way how we work, all the technical and the the, the process part, uh, keeping those thirty members and being able to to serve two hundred, three hundred, I don't know how many APIs. The future will will tell us. Uh, among other things, uh, we would like to step into the geolocated services. There are various uh, various reasons for that. Sometimes purely practical from user experience. You want to reach APIs which are closer to your uh, territory. But sometimes, but it's legal purposes. But in Europe, we have different laws, and then in the US or other parts of the of the world. So uh, there are various. Uh, it, it's critical to um, uh, to keep the data on the right uh, place uh, with the right under the right rules. And of course, we want to step further into everything as a code. That's uh, that's the that's the future mantra. Uh, not only documentation, but also infrastructure. So uh, we are able to uh, automatically uh, spin off new instances uh, to uh, recover uh, in an instant, and so on. And I, I mentioned here also no click release because we have currently our current goal is to have one click release, meaning you click once and you 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 have everything released. Uh, for the documentation, the change management, and so on. And of course, the next stage is to have no no click release. So APIs are released seamlessly when it's time and everything else is automated. Maybe it's too uh, brave idea, but uh, uh, you need to have brave, uh, brave goals. Uh, and I think it's time for a brief summary about the journey so if uh, if any one of you would like to take similar journey as, as, as ours uh there there are several brief uh, things uh, i would like to summarize at the first stage of course you need to discover you need to see also how apis are useful in your company uh what would be the value of apis in your company what are the current tools uh what are the most suitable tools for your for your use case and so on so this is the discovery part after you have it discovered, you need to stabilize and secure it. You need to mature uh, your tools to your processes uh, so you are prepared to what comes next. And of course, you need to start measuring. If you can't measure it, you can't improve it. That, that's very important for any further steps you will take. And then it's the time to scale up, to, 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 to start uh, like providing uh, global services, global API-related support for, for your company. Um, and of course, the focus on users maybe doesn't have to come at the last stage. Uh, it's very important to keep that focus from the beginning. You need to to know what actually, what kind of services you provide, what kind of APIs. Um, uh, it's important for the products and the services to solve someone's problem. If they don't solve anyone's problem, uh, it's not a good service. And that's all for me today. Uh, and I think now it's time for, for maybe several questions, two minutes. Yes, thank you so much for that, Ivan. Thank you, very thorough presentation. We do have time for one or two questions. And so the first one is, you know, thinking forward to the future age and the different types of technology that you've just talked about, you know, what are some effective practices for keeping costs down, you know, as we optimize some of our API systems? Uh, that's a that's a that's a very good question. <laughs> uh, so apart from uh, basically uh, using different types of tools, which will especially uh, in the cloud environment, which uh, assist you with figuring out uh, what are what are the uh, where can you spare something? In the end, I think it's uh, the approach when uh, you automate everything uh, in a way that if you don't need it, it gets uh, it gets um, uh, retired uh, or uh, just uh, decommissioned. Especially in the cloud environment, it's very important. And also optimizing the process itself. Uh, if if you have a simple process, it will be cheaper. Uh, and of course, also um, uh, my personal approach is uh, to uh, when when there is such problem when you can't see the um, uh, the solution immediately, then you need just, just to try it. Try something simple and, and try to test it, measure it, calculate it. And if it's, the, if it's in the right direction, continue, continue in that direction. Thank you so much for that. And so 
you know, what's the best way for people to get in contact with you in case they have additional questions? I think uh, they can use the email or uh, on Twitter and uh, also LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn, but I, I see that I, I didn't provide the, the URL here, but the, either the email or on Twitter. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time today, Ivan. And, you know, we hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you for, for, for listening. And uh, it's a great conference so far. Thank you.